Hello lovely Taurus, this is your reading for November 2023. We're going to look at your love life, we're going to look at destiny, we're going to look at channeled messages and anything else that kind of just flips up for you really. I'm going to take two overall energy cards. Ooh, it's obviously going to be one of those readings and we're going to see what energies are following you around into this month. So kind of coming out of October. Now, the end of October, we had on the 28th a lunar eclipse in your sign. Ha ha. So I feel like the rest of the year, maybe really quite into January, February, even of 2024, you are on a mission, a mission of change. Now, oh, I love that. We have had many discussions. By the way, one of your cards is the lovers, but we'll come back to that. We've had discussions, Taurus, me and you, over the past few months about your clairvoyant abilities and lots of Tor Taurians, I don't know, they can see the future in some way. Leave me a comment, let me know your own weird way of how you see the future. Because all the Taurians I know, you wouldn't know it if you met them, like one of my Taurian friends really, really tells the future really well when she's drunk. And you would think, well, you don't listen to someone who's drunk. I listen to her when she's drunk. It's all there, you know, it's crystal, it's right, and it always comes true. So let me know what your truth-telling little methods are. But either way, between now, like November, and about February, you're gonna be needing them, okay? We kick off with the lovers for you. Now, the lovers in the old-fashioned sense, which this one's following, is usually a man. Choosing between two women. Oh, what a mission for him. Which one shall I choose? I know. So taking that whole kind of patriarchal thing out of it, as we would probably like to, the lovers used to be called the choice back in the day because it is about making a choice. It's not necessarily always about, you know, a man sizing up which woman he's going to get off with. It's just about you in a sense of destiny and your destiny is going in two different directions. Have you seen the film Sliding Doors with Gwyneth Paltrow? God, it's about 20 years old, maybe even more. Makes me feel really old. It's that. It's woulda, coulda, shoulda. It's, you don't even realise it when this is happening to you, but the universe is tapping into two different directions and sort of challenging you spiritually, Taurus, um, you know, tapping on your shoulder, wake up Taurus, wake up, what's going on with you? The universe is saying to you, do you want to go this way? Do you want to go that way? There's something in both ways, which is always the difficult decision to make, isn't it? Usually, you know, if you've got one rubbish thing and one great thing, you're like, well, okay then, I'm after the great thing. This isn't the case. You've got two ways which have merits in both. So look out this month, you will feel it. As we come through November, you will feel, because you do feel, because you're Taurus, you will feel this splitting of roads, okay? It could be in a personal relationship. It could be in a love situation. It could be at your career path. It could be all of these things and your destiny thrown in, okay? So we're getting this big feeling for you of needing to wake up and smell the coffee, okay? Or even smell the mint tea, which is what I've got today. Go and get yourself a drink, Taurus, as well, because this is going to be a big one, as the actress said to the bishop. Now, alongside the lovers, yes, you get the dowager countess herself, the high priestess, okay? The high priestess is modelled on the oracle at Delphi or any kind of feminine energy magician. Who could that be? You. So this is about tapping into your own knowledge. It's not just like airy fairy, oh, use your intuition, you know, because you already will be using your intuition if you're Taurian anyway. But this is strong. To get two mages as your overall energy and to have them with this level of power, you are splitting into a major life stage. It can go this way or that way, okay? There's no need for you to forensically examine it or do a list or be too observant even. It's coming from within. 
it's like it was always meant to happen. You know, that whole funny feeling that you get when fate is knocking on your door and you almost already know it, okay? Taurus. I want a glass table because I'm not at home and it vibrates the camera. So, hey, hey, when I get excited and go Taurus and bang the cards, the table goes like that. I know. Right, Taurus, if this really resonates with you, by the end of the video, there will be an extended reading as there is every single month, okay? In the extended reading, I take all the cards from this reading and we clarify them. Or sometimes I do a whole new reading, depending on what you get, okay? It's essentially an extension to your love reading. So how do they feel about you? What's going on with this person? But see how you get on. See if this resonates with you. I'm going to take two more cards now for the beginning of November. Everybody's getting that one. Oh, I like this. Okay. So think just after the 28th of October, okay? Leading into sort of 1st to the 7th of November. We have got this gorgeous Nine of Wands. No, Nine of Pentacles, okay. We'll see if the Nine of Wands comes up. Nine of Pentacles, which is Venus in Virgo. Now you're ruled by Venus anyway, and you're an Earth sign, so this is good for you. But what it is reminding you of, Taurus, is you're gonna have a lot of feelings kicking around in November, okay? You're gonna be catching feels right, left, and center, blown hither and thither into different energies. You're gonna be absorbing other people's energies. So that's gonna make you feel a bit blown about, okay? This is grounding. You need to do the things that ground you at the same time as all this cosmic and spiritual hullabaloo is happening all around you, okay? So the Nine of Pentacles, we always have a woman in the garden. She's always got a bird of paradise, or here I think she's got like a cockerel. She always has a good outfit on, you know, it's sumptuous very Taurian. Taurians are all about the good comfy fabrics, but also silk, velvet, wool, merino, cashmere. Mm -mm. That is all lovely Taurian things. Notice around your home, Taurus, the beds are comfy, the sofa's good, the cushions are ripe. You know, it's what Taurians are all about. This is you getting into that. You're nesting in your space you're making sure your finances are looked after. Whether you're checking on your, I don't know what you even call those things where you have shares, you know, like, uh, I don't know. Whether you're checking your shares online or whether you're, you know, checking your piggy bank on the mantelpiece, it doesn't matter how you're doing it, but check your finances, keep a handle on them, and this is full preparation just for normal living okay? Because you're in like a maelstrom of feelings and you're going to be knocked off your perch a little bit, in a good way probably, but still knocked off your perch a little bit and thinking, whoa, everything's going around me. People aren't going to make a total amount of sense at times. So in the first week of November, there's going to be a call to action for you to check your bank accounts, to check your money, to check your rent, to check where you're living, to feel into where you're living? Is there a little altar space that you can create? Um, do you need a new duvet for winter? These things, you know, in and of themselves, don't actually sound, sorry, there's two dogs just like <laughs> having a sort of half fight, half love fest outside. I'm a little bit like, <laughs> okay. Um, also, there might be something to do with a dog. A lot of Taurians have dogs because they're quite sensual as well and they're comforting in the home. You may need a new comforter, a new duvet, whatever you want to call it, a new mattress, check the mattress, turn the mattress, you know, wash something. It's a feeling of homely getting set up and earthiness, okay? Don't worry about the other things, the exciting things, your love life, whatever it is, all of that's going to be happening anyway. You don't have to do anything to make that more exciting. This is just making sure your homestead is ready for you to be nesting, okay? Nesting, and also for a few of you, if you are spiritual, which you will be, yeah, make sure you make a little space. It can literally be in the corner of a room where you have a little 
footstool or something, uh, some tarot cards, a candle, whatever it is for you, okay? A couple of crystals, a bowl of water, um, some scented uh, thing that you do when you burn a little tea light and it goes around the room. You can tell I'm not really into that, but you know what I mean, or a decent joystick or sage or whatever it is. Some little keepsakes. Build up your altar space, okay? Because you are the high priestess and she does have an altar. She doesn't just exist out of nowhere. She always have to go to her. There's always an altar. And I think it will help you in this decision-making, life-splitting process, okay? And then you get the Three of Cups, the social card. Your friends will be good at this time. And that means friends, acquaintances, people online, whoever it is that is part of your tribe who you share yourself with, okay? Who you, who knows you the best, basically, and who keeps their eye on you. You know, those people that you can rely on as your BS detector, and they'll tell you the truth. Or you may be that for those people, very likely you are. I have a Torian friend who does that for me. Don't necessarily like it when she does it, but she's always right. Okay, it's a time for radical honesty in your deepest friendships. So play that game, okay? Be radically honest. No, it's not even a game, what am I saying? Do that sport. Be radically honest and allow others to be radically honest with you, okay? Let's look at the second week of November. See if we can spot a development. Ooh, that card's hiding. Come on, out you come. No wonder it's hiding. Oh gosh, 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 gosh. Second week of November, yum. Okay, you get the hermit. This is lovely energy, but it was hiding in the pack. It didn't want to come out. Had to give it a little bit of a tweak to get it out, okay? This is a mode you do really, really well. It does necessarily mean Virgo, but that doesn't matter. There is some time needed for you to be in your hermit mode. And this doesn't have to mean that you whack on an old potato sack and go into a cave on the edge of town, okay? Things have moved on since these hermit times. Now, Taurians make perfect hermits because what it actually is, is just rooming in at home, okay? Settling in your nest, having your altar, nice cups of tea, nice chocolate, ice cream, decent food, salad, whatever your thing is, okay? No judgment here. The nicer, the better. Have these comfortable things around you, but also a bit of solitude. You have something to work out in the second week of November, and it feels like solitude is gonna get you there you know, and it's a time then, you've got your friends and everything going on in the first week. In the second week, more time on your own, okay? So just schedule some own time. Maybe you're gonna go for a walk in the woods, obviously do it, be safe, you know? Go on a little nature trail, get a couple of those things, pine cones or something to go on your altar. Get an autumnal leaf or a spring, depending on which side you're in. Got some Australians and New Zealanders who are coming into spring and I'm really jealous. So do this justice. And actually, as I look, there's autumnal leaves, which I didn't know, which are on this card already. Okay. Love that. Okay. So you turn into the hermit in week two, it does you the world of good and it does the trick and the answer will come to you, whatever it is, because you get the six of wands. Winner, winner, chicken dinner or vegan alternative is here. Woohoo! Okay, Taurus. Yes. This is the winning zippity doo card, okay, if you want to call it that. There's a breakthrough in the mid-November, towards the end of the second week. You have a breakthrough with somebody and you really didn't think you would. You may have been painting yourselves into a corner. It could be something with a colleague at work. It could be a love relationship. But either way, progress is made, okay? Let's have a look 
into the third week of November, then we're gonna actually look a couple of cards about your love life, because I'm sensing for some of you that there is something. Oh, I'm liking. I'm, November's getting better and better for you as we go along, okay? So, third week of November. The Knight of Swords gallops in. Could be dealing with an air sign, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius, but more importantly, the Knight of Swords, as you can see, is in a hurry. It's always blue, silver, and white, okay? And it represents the air signs because of communication. When it comes in like this, it's quite sudden. It could be a call, it could be a text, it could be informational, it can even be a letter, you know, whatever it is. It's a feeling of directness where before there hasn't been any, okay? So your breakthrough in the second week where you've got the Hermit and you've got the Six of Wands leads to a direct conversation, a direct message, a, a fat juicy text, but also could be an email, any way that we can communicate, which of course is like millions of different ways, you're getting a big load of information. Somebody wants to talk, okay? Somebody wants to say something. Something spills out that before I don't think was spilling out. It was quite hidden. And you get it with Mr. Wolfcut. Look at that. Looks a bit like Liz Hurley's son. You'd have to Google it if you're not from the UK. But anyway, the Wolfcut man is here. Page of Cups. This is a love offer in its infancy. So it's not like serenading you at the window, you know, full-blown scroll or you know, a diamond ring, you know, in your champagne glass in the restaurant. It's not that far on. It's the beginning of something. Whether this is somebody that you already know, whether it's a reunion, whether it's a new person, doesn't matter. It's thick and fast and sudden, but also is born out of week two when you've spent the time as the hermit and you've actually lighted upon the right idea. I think if you're doing that hermit time in week two, that the universe will drop you, little drop, I'm getting a channel of little droplets, this is nice, little droplets of gold liquid. It's gonna drop you lovely little ideas of which way to go next, okay? And from then, week three is information, conversations. It can be because we've got the page of cups just that you haven't heard from someone in ages and you get a text and it kicks something off. It starts the ball rolling. Page of Cups is normally about romance, could be an old best friendship though, um, either or. Both are important to you. Let's look at the fourth week and then I'll take a couple of cards for your love life. Oh, I knew that was coming. We knew that because we'd already said it. Oh, okay. I'm excited, sorry. Nine of Wands. Do you remember when we got the Nine of Pentacles and I thought it was the Nine of Wands? Well, now you've got the Nine of Wands. What have we been talking about all year? It's the B word. Boundaries, yes. In the fourth week, you are going to be called upon to express what your boundaries are with somebody. whether it's in your love life, whether it's in your work life, you also get the Seven of Swords. Now, I don't think, it depends, because we're gonna look at your love life in a minute, I don't think this is someone betraying you. I don't have a reading here that whiffs of betrayal, okay? But the Seven of Swords can sometimes mean keep your powder dry. Don't reveal too much, okay? whether this is after you've had that love conversation in the third week or whether you've had a big thing going on at work with somebody and you don't quite know where it's going, don't give away your position immediately, okay? That's a test for you in the last week of November. Now, let's have a look at your love life. Wow. Oh, wow. Okay. No, 
don't need that one. Right, you get the star. This is really good, very auspicious. You know when you were spending time in week two where you were the hermit and then you are the winner winner chicken dinner or vegan alternative. There's something about this, the star that kind of, it's about manifesting and it's about naming what you want. And it's about being incredible at manifesting, which you will be. And that's partly why I want you to have your altar, okay, ready. Because I feel like, and this is a really weird channel that I'm getting, for some of you, you could go out on a little walk and find little objects, pebbles, leaves, whatever, which represent what you want to happen, okay? And just put them on display for yourself. This is letting the universe truly into your heart about what you want. It's about you visualizing what you want, whether it's a successful relationship, whether it's a successful job, whether it's money, a different home, doesn't matter, okay? The universe is waiting on you. So be open to that, Taurus. Be really, really open. I love that for you. And then we have the Six of Swords. Now, the Six of Swords is an offer from somebody to help you out of a situation. There is a way out. It can sometimes be an idea, but it's very often attached to a human. It's, you know, as if someone's throwing you the life preserver, okay? Just taking two more cards for your love life, which I think looks rather good, actually. Okay. Major arcana of the world, and that goes back to the lovers. There's just something about this trio that reminds me of the lovers, okay? So whatever happened in that first week when you're the high priestess and when your roads of fate are splitting off, you return to this now, but with different eyes. It's the end of the month. You've done your hermit thing. You're a heck of a lot the wiser. And you can make your informed choice as we go into December. This might play out right up into January, February, but you make an informed choice, okay? And the Eight of Swords is telling you, it's weird. Normally the Eight of Swords is telling you not to, you know, to bust beyond your limitations, but I don't think so this time. I see the Eight of Swords as boundaries for you that you don't want to overstep, okay? Should we take an outcome card? I love your reading. And then I'm going to take a love oracle card. And then in the extended reading, I'm going to look at the lovers, the high priestess, the page with his wolf cup, wolf cup, wolf cup, the hermit, what we need to be doing at our altar, some good manifestation tips for you as well in there. And also I'll double check that seven of swords. Never does any harm. Oof. Okay. My God, you are absolutely on it. Right, outcome, 10 of swords, a situation plays itself out. You have an outcome, okay? It's been very difficult getting there, but it was too painful to stay the same. So that is good in the end, but you've been feeling that for a while, could have been the last 10 weeks. And you get it with the wheel of fortune. And again, for some reason, this is reminding me of the lovers. Wheel of Fortune is, it's not necessarily saying everything's gonna be amazing. It's, everything is gonna change. And change is good, okay? Let's have a Love Oracle card for you. I'm loving that one. Right, we get for you chivalry. Absolutely. Turning up with some chockies or some flowers. I'm not so sure about the horse, but you know, let me know in the comment section if, if you're big on the horse idea. Either way, this is somebody, you're doing a little dance, those of you that are looking at love life, you're doing a little dance of shaping up or, or kind of casing out what you need from the other person. And this, I think, has got something to do with the Knight of Swords. 
You may find as well with the chivalry card that if someone has been a bit lacking in that department, they're gonna come up with something unexpected. Taurus, this reading is very fresh. It's like a bowl of fruit. I really like it for you, okay? I'm gonna go and do the extended. If you wanna join me there, it's the first link in the description box. Otherwise, leave me a comment about your own psychic abilities or your own situation, okay? Drop your astrology in the comments. I love to read my comments and I'll reply to as many as I can. Okay, see you on the other side, Taurus. Namaste.